So patch testing is, a, this is our cupboard. We have, um, I don't know, about 200 allergens, something like that, that we can test people to. And uh, the person is, has these put onto their back and then it's removed. And uh, this one's reacted to thioram. So thioram is a common allergen, um, but this person will not be able to wear rubber gloves and some other things. You can get thioram free rubber gloves, but uh, you may not be able to recognize which ones don't have it in it. Um, and it can be quite complicated if you tested to, in this case, 65, but we test up to 200 items. Very expensive, tedious, um, requires skill. I get quite upset. I won't allow the first year dermatology registrars to do the readings because they haven't a clue. Depends which allergen is, whether you take a slight redness as being a severe allergy or to be ignored, it doesn't count. <laughs> and um, it, half the time, we've no idea what it means. It's an art, not a science. Uh, okay, barrier creams. So barrier creams mainly have dimethicone in them. You have to be a bit careful with dimethicone because it's also sold as a head lice treatment. So you want to get the right one. Um, so Cavillon barrier cream is not funded, but it's got a dimethicone in it. Zinc and castor oils doesn't have dimethicone in it, but is also used as a barrier cream. But here we have this one here. 4% dimethicone lotion is used for head lice. 10% or 5% cream is used as a barrier cream. So when do I use those? Mainly for hand dermatitis. Uh, here's your 50-50. That's a good barrier cream. And zinc and castor oil. Um, so you put moisturizers on wet skin it'll work better than dry skin. It doesn't mean don't put it on dry skin but if you are going to wet your skin then it, it, uh, putting it on afterwards will work a bit better. Um, you're supposed to remove the cream of the spatula but who does that? Uh, you're supposed to put it in the direction of hair growth but who does that? And if you put too much on you're going to get a folliculitis. Now uh, this is uh, on the Pharmac website, but not many people seem to know about it, that uh, would you be surprised to learn that paraffin is you, if you put a light to it, will catch fire? Maybe not. Shouldn't be so surprising, really. So it turns out that it's not paraffin on the skin that causes the problem, it's paraffin on the clothing that causes the problem. So you put the paraffin on, you put your pajamas on, and then you stand in front of your fire. Not a good mixture. Urea cream stings. It's very good at dry skin. So somebody who has dry skin on the basis of ichthyosis or dry skin because they've got venous disease or actinic keratosis. So they've got a normal stratum corneum. I'm going to use urea cream because it's very good at moisturizing, but it, it's not tolerated by atopics very often. Salicylic acid, this is in tar, so salicylic acid isn't brown, the tar is the brown, but I couldn't find a picture of just salicylic acid. Do you see how there's crystals? Little fine needle crystals? So um, it does it, you have to mix it because otherwise you've got all these crystals and you can end up with a kind of crystalline feeling on the skin. So a salicylic acid, short-lasting product really. 5% salicylic acid in white soft paraffin is, is quite good at moisturizing dry skin, but again, it's an acid, so it's going to sting. So we use that for actinic keratosis, severe hand dermatitis, foot dermatitis, that sort of thing. However, this is not available from Pharmac as a product. You can go into your pharmacy and buy a pot of 5% salicylic acid and white soft paraffin, but you can't actually get it without being mixed up uh, on um, Pharmac. So it comes as a powder, and they have to mix it with a dermatologic base or a topical steroid. 
And so this is complicated. People don't understand what any of that means. I'm not sure I do. I keep writing to Pharmac about that, but still stays there. Um, lotions. So lotions are used by people with normal skin, so they probably don't need them. But sometimes they have a good pur purpose, and these are the ones that uh, are available on the schedule, and these are their costs. You see they're not fully funded by Pharmac. They are a contribution is given because they're very popular. They're very easy to use. Um, quickly, you can just quickly do that. And if you're me, you know, I've got normal skin, but when I shave my legs, gosh, they itch. I'll, I'll use a lotion just to deal with that. Um, aqueous cream, is it a moisturizer or is it irritant? It's a moisturizer if it doesn't have SLS. So the new funded products are SLS free. Ceta macrogold cream is pretty much the same as aqueous cream. It's just slightly different, but more or less the same. Uh, but you will see that these two products both have the name non-myonic cream, but they have different ingredients. Emulsifying ointment can contain S SLS there as well, so just be a bit, bit uh, cautious there. This one doesn't. Emulsifying wax, white soft paraffin, liquid paraffin. Doesn't have a preservative because it hasn't got water in it. Doesn't have any SLS because they've removed it. It's just grease. Size thick grease. 50-50, we talked about that already. Doesn't have any preservative or SLS. This one, fatty cream. So it's kind of halfway between a cream and an ointment. Um, and sorbeline cream. So sorbeline cream and glycerine, again, it's just a name. The ingredients of one product may be different from the ingredients of another. So if we look at the healthy product and compare it with a pharmacy health product, this is the one that's funded. The, the funded one, um, has two, two compounds in it which could cause irritation in some people. And if they do, they could buy this one, which is very inexpensive, but it's not funded, and it doesn't have those two and is slightly less likely to irritate. Calamine. Who? Calamine. I have yet to meet a dermatologist that has ever prescribed calamine, but it is sold in buckets. We wrote to Pharmac and said, why don't you take it off the list? But they said, oh, no, it's very popular. Um, but not popular with dermatologists. Because it messes up the skin and we can't see the rash. It, it's an irritant. It dries out the skin. And mainly you're not wanting to dry skin that's itchy because it's going to be more itchy afterwards. It might be cooling at the time because it's cooling. Um, but it, it's not, I don't know. It's good for chicken pox, probably. Um, it sometimes has phenol in it. Well, phenol's not very good for you. It's a poison. Um, too much phenol, you're dead. It's a cardiotoxic. Uh, they don't have much phenol, but um, here it is some, 0.5%. In that one, anyway, not in the others. So the N New Zealand formulary says preparations containing calamine are often infective and may increase dry skin. Calamine preparation is a little value for the treatment of insect bites. Uh, New Zealand formulary was, is based on the British formulary. Uh, management of itch. Well, it's a good idea to find the cause and treat that. Use moisturisers. If we don't know the cause and moisturisers alone are not working, we add menthol which is much safer than phenol. We used to put phenol in as well, but we don't anymore. Um, and menthol cools the skin, and it does it by heating the skin first and then cooling. So if you've ever used tiger balm, uh, tiger balm is based on menthol. Uh, but you don't want a very strong menthol, so don't put 8% because that's in deep heat, uh, which of course is a product used to try and get pain relief deeper down in the joints and muscles, uh, but that can burn the skin. So we just use, if it's a small problem, I'll use half a percent 
uh, 1%. I never go over 1%. And patients love it or hate it. So patients given menthol cream, sometimes they just say, this is the best thing. I put this on and I get hours of relief. And others say, well, it's okay. It gives me 20 minutes relief. That's better than nothing, I suppose. And others will say, I can't bear it. It's too painful. So um, that has to be mixed up by the pharmacist to get uh, Pharmac payment. Uh, so the pharmacist mix crystals into whatever base you put it. I usually put it in a Cetamac gold base. Um, crotamiton. So crotamiton is another anti-itch product. Um, it's not very effective. It's used for post scabetic itch. It was supposed to work for scabies, but it's not much good for scabies. But it, it does help itch a bit. It just comes, it's unsubsidized. Oh no, here we have full subsidy for 20 grams, I think. Yeah. Well, 20 grams isn't going to last you long. So, as most itch is due to dermatitis, treat the dermatitis. Now, this isn't dermatitis, this is just itch, an awful, awful deep scratching. So we have to figure out why is somebody scratching themselves so, so severely? Because no person who isn't itchy would do that to themselves. So somebody that walks in here, we know that they're intensely itchy. Um, and that's really, really difficult. So we have to look at what's the cause. Do they have some systemic reason for itch? Or have they got a nerve ending problem which is making them itch? Antihistamines. We don't use them for itch. I, I, I think everyone referred to me as on a sedating antihistamine for itch. They don't work. Why are they given? Pharmax written in its, br its um, usual what's it? prescribing notes or something, whatever they're called. Um, it basically says don't use sedating antihistamines, they're bad for you, they're anticholinergics, the older patients are often on anticholinergics already and they're toxic and we see adverse effects from multiple drugs that are anticholinergics. Um, so they're used because you put people to sleep I suppose, they get through their itch by being asleep but maybe we need to use more conventional sleeping tablets rather than that. So antihistamines are used for urticaria. In that, there are histamine is related to the etiology. Histamine has nothing to do with eczema. There's no histamine increase in eczema. Bases, mm, paraffin, topical steroids. Strengths. Topical steroids come in different strengths. This is the list used by um, the formulary. And I said, where did you get it from? And they said, we got it from Dermnet. And I said, well, where did Dermnet get it from? I thought we got it from you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's lost in the mists of time. Uh, and so I think Pharmac also has this list. We can't remember where it came from. Because there's some argument as to whether this list is correct or not, particularly the product um, hydrocortisone 17 butyrate, which is put in the potent group, but we suspect really lives in the moderate group. Quantities. Quantities are really difficult. I haven't got a, I haven't got a handle on this at all. I do not know how much to prescribe any of my patients because I don't know whether it's going to work, whether they're going to use it, how thickly they're going to put it on, what part of the body they're going to put it on. All I know is most people are not prescribed enough. And I probably prescribe more generous quantities uh, that are more than they need, but not always. So there's these little clues. Uh, face and neck, give them a 15 to 30 grams, two hands, 15 to 30 grams, you know, both arms, 30 to 60, both legs, 100 gram trunk. These amounts are suitable for an adult for a single daily application for two weeks. That's a fingertip unit. Um, so fingertip units can be a little bit helpful. So um, I, one of this lecture, I actually put little bits of different creams in little pots and took it to the lecture, and I use it quite a lot to show patients. 
Okay, so what's wrong with moisturizers? Well, they sting, they cause dermatitis, and they sometimes cause contact photoallergy. What do these things look like? Well, sting stinging will sometimes be associated with redness, but it's soon gone. So stinging is an immediate irritation. I don't like that product because it stings. That doesn't mean that it's harmful. It just might be that it stings. Uh, irritant contact dermatitis is a dermatitis. So that takes several days to appear. You don't get dermatitis immediately. It takes days. Um, and there will be a surface change because dermatitis or eczema, same thing, uh, there's a surface change. Could be blisters, could be dryness, could be bumps. Allergy. Allergy is exactly the same if it's causing a dermatitis in appearance, but it may spread past where you put it. So if you apply product X there and you get an irritant reaction to X, it'll just be there. But if you're allergic to it, you might find it goes a little bit wider and then appears on the other arm. Uh, and photocontact dermatitis has to be exposed to the sun. So here's an irritant contact dermatitis. That was, I can't remember what, sunscreen maybe? Mm. This was to water, just over washing the hands. Um, this is an allergy to, this one's to neoprene, so it took a bit of um, a job working that one out. Uh, but it was to neoprene socks, so diving socks. Uh, quaternium 15, that was a face that blistered all over. Quaternium 15 is a very, very common preservative in many, many products. Photocontact dermatitis. Um, so this was a sunscreen reaction. Only, so the sunscreen was applied to the whole arm but the reaction only occurred on the sun exposed part of the arm. Um, this one was to lime, so uh, cutting lime while outdoors at a party, the lime juice got on the fingers, the sun was shining, caused to a dermatitis. Uh, grease. Mess. We'll know about mess. Folliculitis. Okay, so venous eczema, you might want a moisturizer for. You're going to treat the venous disease with compression and you're going to have a vascular assessment. You're going to treat the eczema with topical steroids and we're going to use a moisturizer that's easy to apply and easy to obtain. So nothing too greasy because they can't get down there to put it on. So it needs to be something that will slop on fairly easy. We're going to use the sorbolene and glycerine. We could use that for washing as well. But this one has got this really thick scale. So we're going to add urea cream or 5% salicylic acid to get rid of that thick scale. This one, we can do that, but it probably isn't going to work. So we're going to try a stronger mixture to try and get it off. Um, discoid eczema, topical steroids are the main thing. The skin in between is quite normal. Uh, but we're going to use the moisturizer to soothe itch and so reduce the amount of topical steroid used. We're going to treat this, the eczema somehow. This person doesn't have eczema, they're not itchy, they've just got dry skin. They've used every cream on the market and then they come to you. Mostly they give up putting creams on because it's too much effort and it doesn't work. But we'll probably go for the urea cream because that's the funded product. Um, so this person presents with a contact dermatitis there's an edge to it. This one, I don't know what provoked it, but maybe it was something in a dressing of some kind or a bandage. Going to treat the swelling with compression. We're going to treat the eczema with topical steroid. We're going to use sorbolene and glycerine. But they definitely reacted to something because it wasn't there a week ago. So we might arrange patch testing. Now we're going to arrange patch testing in the first week. Um, we're going to arrange it if they still have a problem in six months time. It's an expensive process, it's complex, it's difficult to interpret. We book about six months in advance anyway. Scabies, well, that looks pretty much the same as the others, but uh, this time we have to kill the mite. And if we don't kill the mite, we're not going to win. So this is crusted scabies, um, causing crusting around the digits. Patient wasn't itchy, just dry and scaly. Uh, 